Step number one. You should be very clear that you are not God and you are a man and you are here to deliver a message from God, like every prophet. Do you want to prove from the Bible? Okay. John 8.40 As it is, you're looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Here Jesus is saying that he's just a man who's telling us what he heard from God, right? Luke 18, 19 Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. Here Jesus is saying that we can only call God good. But because Jesus is not God, we can't call him good. Is it clear? Check this out. John 20, 17 I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Here Jesus is referring to God as his father and our father too. So God is the father of everybody, not only him. John 14, 28 The father is greater than I. Here Jesus is saying that our father, God, is greater than him. If he's God, how come God is greater than him? John 4, 19 The woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Matthew 21, 11 Crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet. John 7, 40 Surely this man is a prophet. These are just three examples from the Bible referring to Jesus as a prophet. John 17, 3 Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This verse is making a clear distinction between the one true God and Jesus, the prophet he sent to us. John 5.30 By myself I can do nothing. Here Jesus is clarifying that he can't do miracles by himself. God gave him these abilities like he gave the ability to do miracles to Moses and other prophets. Step number two. You should pray to God and prostrate yourself to him. John 17.1 After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed. Matthew 26, 39, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. By praying to God, you make sure that everyone understands that you cannot possibly be God himself. If you are God himself, then who are you praying to? Also, you teach people that praying is done by putting your face to the ground. Step number three, you should teach people to worship one God only and pray to him only like you. Luke 4, 8, Jesus answered, it's written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Mark 12, 29, the most important one, answered Jesus, is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus made himself very clear that God is one. He didn't say three and he didn't say three in one. Step number four. You should ask people to follow laws of God perfectly and to be more righteous than the Jews. Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Number 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Here Jesus is clarifying that he is not preaching a new religion and we should follow the Mosaic law. Number 18. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Here Jesus is clarifying that we should follow God's laws until the end of time and never, ever ignore them. Number 19. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly, he will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands, he will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Here Jesus is saying that we will be judged based on our deeds according to God's laws, not based on faith alone. Number 20. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Here Jesus is saying that if you don't follow the laws perfectly, even better than the Jews, you will not enter eternal paradise. Finally, step number 5. You should spend your whole life never claiming to be God or part of a trinity and follow exactly every law in the Mosaic law and then go away, and wait for the interesting part of history to happen. First, one of your enemies who spent his life persecuting Christians, let's call him Paul for now, will have a better idea to destroy your religion. Instead of using force, he can just claim that while walking alone in a desert next to Syria, 
he got a revelation from God himself, saying that all laws that Jesus taught in his life are just a curse, and we don't have to follow them anymore. Even though Jesus was very clear when he taught us that we will be judged based on how good we are in obeying the laws, Paul says that having eternal life in paradise is by belief alone, and following the laws like Jesus is just a curse. So a rapist or a murderer who has belief will have eternal life in paradise, but a good decent person who does charity and helps humanity but does not believe Paul will be in hell. Totally makes sense. And the funny thing is that because people hate obeying God's laws and just want to drink alcohol and sleep around and have fun, some of them will just ignore Jesus and believe Paul. Fortunately, it's not all of the Christians. It was only some of them who followed Paul and the majority still follow Jesus. That's why we found more than 50 Gospels representing the division between the people of this era about Jesus' life. But that's not the end of it. Wait 200 more years. Because the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine I needed a way to unite the people under his rule and control the pagans and the Christians who followed Jesus and the new Christians who ignored Jesus and followed Paul with a unified religion for all of them, he decided in AD 325 to gather a council of Christian bishops in the first council of Nicaea. And in this council, they decided to create one official new religion for Rome. They chose one story from the available stories about Jesus. They took only four Gospels from the 50 plus Gospels available back then and threw away the others. And they mixed it with the former pagan religion concept of Father God, Son God. They even united the holidays of the two religions, the pagan one and the Christian one. For example, the pagan winter holiday of the Son God birthday became the winter holiday of the Son of God birthday, while Jesus wasn't even born in the winter. And they liked the idea of church leaders having full authority given to them by the Holy Spirit. So they came up with the Trinity idea in AD 381 in the First Council of Constantinople. Because if people think that church leaders are appointed by God to tell us what to do, people will just obey them in everything. And also, they will become extremely rich, which actually happened to the church throughout the whole medieval period. Google it. Church leaders asked people to give them all their surplus money. Church leaders would even sell get out of hell certificates for the elites. They would do anything for money. And original Christians who actually rejected this new man-made religion and kept following the original teachings of Jesus were persecuted and killed and tortured until they extinct. And this new man-made religion was created and became the new Christianity almost 400 years after Jesus. It has nothing to do with Jesus or his teachings or God. It's simply prepared, cooked and served by the Romans. That's it.